Hello, everybody. All right, we're going to get into our last two tests for convergence or divergence. Uh, the nice thing is that these two tests, both of them, uh, the ratio and the root test, will be able to determine absolute convergence straight off the bat. So we can use this if we're trying to figure out absolute convergence or conditional or anything like that. Uh, but notice the directions in the first one, right? It just says discuss the convergence. I'm not looking for uh, again, just like in the last video, I'm not looking for conditional or absolute convergence unless I specifically state determine if the series is conditionally convergent, absolutely convergent, or divergent, right? So unless we state those directions, we are not specifically looking for those things. Okay, so essentially th this ratio test, given a series with a sub n, uh, it converges. It, notice all of these, right? It's still the ratio, all of them. They're all just the ratio. It is safe to connect your device. Cool. Great. Um, so it's all the same, all no matter what. I still haven't edited in them, but these are supposed to be ends approaching infinity. So if I do, remember a subscript n plus 1 is the term just after a sub n, right? It would go a sub n, a sub n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, so on and so forth, right? So essentially, if I take the terms, the ratio of the terms, so as they go, if I do the subsequent term over the previous term, if my ratio is less than one, it converges absolutely. If it is greater than one, it diverges, right? So if the ratio is increasing, it is going to diverge. If the ratio is decreasing, uh, it should converge. Uh, it is inconclusive when it equals one. I really haven't seen these when it equals one. Uh, so I, I would have to do a little bit of research to give you a good example. Um, but it, it's a really pretty straightforward test. So let's just go ahead and roll through it. It's just going to take some work simplifying on your end. Okay, discuss the ratio test to discuss the convergence. So first thing first, that is a terrible E, sigma. I'm going to let this be sigma of a sub n. You don't have to do the sigma. You could also say a sub n equals n squared 2 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n, and that be the same thing. Makes no difference. It just felt like less writing if I did it in this form this time. So then I'm going to do the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n, uh, sorry, a sub n plus 1, right? So n plus 1 squared, I'm just putting in n plus 1s, 2 to the n plus 1 plus 1, so 2 to the n plus 2 over 3 to the n plus 1. Now, next, going back to kind of middle school terminology, I'm going to be dividing by a sub n. And a sub n in middle school terminology is a fraction. So if I am dividing fractions, what that means for me is since I am dividing fractions, I can multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 3 to the n over n squared, 2 to the n plus 1. Close my absolute value. All right, so in this now, uh, it's just going to be a matter of simplifying. So let's, let's take a look at our uh, 2 to the n plus 2 and 2 to the n plus 1, right? So this is 2 to the n times 2 squared, and this is 2 to the n times 2. So my 2 to the n's will divide out. My 2 can divide out one of the 2 squared, so I'm just left with the 2 up top. Same idea with the 3's. The 3 to the n over 3 to the n can divide out, so I'm really just left with 3 to the first in there. The n plus 1 squared is stuck, the n squared is stuck, so I have the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value, which really is going to be positive anyway. So what was it? 2 times n plus 1 squared over 3n squared, right? And that is a much easier limit, right? So it's just a matter of simplifying with these stuff. That's going to be a little bit more tricky. Uh, and this is much easier because I have essentially this is going to multiply out to be like n squared plus 2n plus 1. So since I have the exponent is the same, n squared and n squared, I can just take the horizontal asymptote of this thing, which will be 2 thirds. So the reason that is important, if I go back to my beginning definitions, is that is less than 1. Cool. So since it is less than 1, what that means for me is I converge, and I converge absolutely if we were asking about it. So I can say, since the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n equals 2 thirds, and that is important because it is less than 1. The series converges 
by the ratio test. Again, if you want to put converges absolutely or whatever right there, you're more than welcome to. But unless we specifically ask for it, you don't, you don't need to. It's just a more specific type of convergence. All right, moving on. So let's see, n to the n and n factorial. So I'm going to say that a sub n is n to the n over n factorial. So I'm going to do the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value. Put in n plus 1, so n plus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n over n to the n. And there's my limit set up. So thinking about the simplification of these things, if I think about my factorials first, since n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, so on and so forth, all the way down. And n plus 1 is n plus 1 times n times n minus 1, all the way down. That means I can divide out n times n minus 1 all the way down. So that bottom part is just left with n plus 1. So I'm going to put should have some stuff on top, n plus 1. Uh, and then the n plus 1, n to the n plus 1. Notice how that factor, this factor, is the same as this. And as, since I have a 1, I'm just going to write that separately because I do believe that something rather neat will happen with that. You may not think it's neat, but it's neat! It's definitely neat! Okay, because these two things will divide out, right? The n plus 1 and the n plus 1. So what is Dungatz? Come on, make a sign there. Put it there. Yeah, buddy. Okay, and the other thing that's cool here is that since these are both raised to the n power, I can write them in the same fraction, which in this form, this is a definition of the Euler's constant. What is Euler's constant? Euler's constant is something that you learned all the way back in pre-cal. And if I write it like this, maybe... Some of you guys will be like, oh, I recognize that. That is E. And if you remember, I think there was one like one video notes that I may have said, if you put a three there, then it's E cubed. And then it showed up on a quiz not too long after that. And I was like, dang it, I gave it away. Um, but you can show this with um, what we learned in 8.7. You can, you can show this. I believe I did this exact proof in the 8.7 notes. So if you want to go look at the 8.7 notes, check out this limit. I did it there. Alrighty. Oh, I need to make my statement. And this is important because E is approximately 2.7, right? Which I don't need to know too much more. It definitely goes on. I think it's like 2.718, blah, 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 blah. Um, but that is important because that is greater than 1. So I can say since the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1, that's very poorly written. Make sure it is indeed subscript over a sub n equals e, which is greater than 1, the series diverges by the ratio test. And the ratio test is something that is very, very powerful. So as we move forward, please, please, please make sure you guys really work hard on the ratio test. Now the root test is really only when I have, so like notice you're taking the nth root of all of these things, the nth root. Uh, these x's should all be n's, n, n, n approaches infinity. Um, but it is, it is something when I have just an n in the power. And normally if I have an n in the power, right, if I have a series of 3 over 5 to the n, that's geometric, and that's a convergent geometric because the rate is 3 fifths and it's less than 1. However, this part a down here, this is not geometric because of that n right there. If I were to try to write that, this would be e squared over n to the n power, which is cool, but e squared over n is not a rate. A rate is just a number. This includes an n. That is a variable. All right, but our, our, essentially we're taking the nth root of the absolute value of the sequence, um, and if it is less than 1, if the terms go down, go down, 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 less than 1, uh, then I am convergent, and I converge absolutely. If I'm greater than 1, or infinity, right, infinity is greater than 1, uh, it diverges, and again, inconclusive when I equal to 1. So if you recognize that, this is the same requirements as the uh, ratio test, right, and that if I am less than, I converge. If I'm greater than, I diverge. If I'm equal to, I am inconclusive. So let's just work through it. 
I'm going to again state that a sub n is e to the 2n over n to the n. Uh, this, this test is very seldomly used. Um, it is a good test because it's pretty quick. It's nice. Um, but I, I rarely see this come up on the BC test. But there is still probably like a 10 to 20% likelihood that you could see a question on it. So I'd like to prepare you rather than being like, eh, whatever. They'll figure it out, right? So I'm going to do the limit. And it's really pretty easy. The nth root of absolute value of e to the 2n over n to the n. Because if you remember the nth root, like if I had the cube root of something, that'd be to the one third power. If I had the fifth root, that'd be to the one fifth. If I had the sixth root, one sixth, so on and so forth. So the nth root is just those things. If you need to write this, you're more than welcome to. You won't see me do it on my tests or quizzes or anything like that, just because I understand it. But this is the same thing as e to the 2n over n to the n raised to the 1 over n power, because then you will distribute that to this power and this power, and you will notice the n's will divide out. So what that means for us is that this can turn into the limit as n approaches infinity of e squared over n. And what will that go to? e squared over infinity is a very, very small number that might as well be 0. And 0 is important because it is indeed less than 1. So I can say since the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of a sub n is equal to 0, which is less than 1. E series converges by the root test. Beautiful. All right, so again, we need to state what we know, what it tells us, and what tests we used. So that, that answer will be worth like three points right there. All right, moving on. So with this one, all right, I'm just going to say, that's a little better. Mm -hmm. Nope, 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 a sub n. So I'm gonna do the limit, especially since I have an n there and I have two n's there, I wanna do the nth root. n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of 2n over n plus 1 to the n close your absolute value. That will equal the limit as n approaches infinity of what 2n over n plus 1, which comes out as 2. Since the powers are the same, it has a horizontal asymptote. So I can say since the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n is equal to 2, and that is important because it is greater than 1. D series diverges. Whoa. Diverges by the root test. And that is it. You have done it. Those are all of your tests. So there are definitely some more annoying than others. Um, Proving absolute conditional convergence is like the most annoying, but you can use the ratio test and the root test to help you come up with those things a little bit faster, unless it's conditional. Um, limit comparison is kind of annoying. Direct comparison is kind of annoying. Um, some of the others are kind of annoying, but most of them are okay. So the big deal about these things is just remembering all of the requirements. So I beg you guys, I'll try to, uh, I should screenshot this and give it to you as well as far as like on canvas or something like that. Where are we? That's the remainder. I want nine six. Right, so after all of these, these are all of the tests we have discussed. This also includes all of the restrictions. So like nth term, notice there's no condition for convergence because it is only good for divergence. It even has a comment. The test cannot be used to show convergence. Uh, geometric, it shows when it is convergent, when it is divergent, and how to find the sum. For telescoping, they show how to find the sum, but I would just take a look at those in your notes. P-series are pretty straightforward. Alternating series, we haven't talked about the remainder, but we will get there in the second nine weeks, um, unless this is in the future and I added it into the 9.5 notes, which is very possible. Uh, the integral, notice they have f is continuous positive and decreasing. You need to state that. Um, and then all of the conditions there. That remainder is something that I don't think that we touch on. Yeah, I don't think we touch on that. Um, you have the root test, the ratio test, direct comparison, and limit comparison, right? So it shows you all of these things. This is kind of a quick go-to. 
This is on page 632 of your book, but I will put it in Canvas as well so you guys have quick access to it there. All right, but that, that concludes our series tests. So next we will be able to get into power series, uh, which are pretty cool and they, they start to get a little bit more interesting. All right, hopefully this was helpful, pretty quick. I'll talk to you all soon. Boop.